thank you very much. I would also like to thank you for getting this opportunity to come here to speak today. Um, I have been also asked to talk about water markets. Normally I would be talking about water markets in Australia, or water market in Alberta, or something that I'm really familiar with how to know something about, but no. I was asked to talk about water market in Okanagan and equity and economic efficiency of water market in Okanagan. I actually don't think it's quite equitable, right? Ron has a wife from here, right? So he should be a lot more qualified than I am. Maybe it's because I live closer to Lethbridge. We don't give a lot of uh, detailed knowledge about uh, what goes on in Okanagan. And my wife is from Copenhagen, so that's even further away. <laughs> um, but what I will be doing today is that I will be talking a little bit about the problem in Okanagan as I see it, and then I will be talking a little bit about, or most of my talk will be about uh, how I think you should be proceeding from here based on what I think they should do in Alberta. I just published a paper by the City Howe Institute in Toronto about the implementation or the opportunities for water markets in, um, in Alberta. So I have just been given this a uh, fair bit of thought. But Alberta is not Okanagan. Right? So but that's what I'll be doing. I'll be talking a little bit about the issues, the problems, the challenges associated with introducing water markets. And I'll be uh, drawing from experiences from Australia and Alberta um, in that regard. I have been monitoring, analyzing inside out uh, water markets in Australia since the uh, early 1990s when water markets started. I did the first research in the socioeconomic impact in water markets in Australia as part of my PhD in the late 1990s. So you can see I was very late in getting started in academia. It was my second career. Um, so that's basically what I intend to talk about today. So some of the issues that we are facing here is in Okanagan is both caused by past things and future things. As Ron pointed out, obviously uh, water scarcity is not really that bad. I tell you the bread and breakfast I stayed with in Osoyas this morning was pouring water absolutely running down the gutters, sprinkling over my car and the whole thing. So uh, there certainly wasn't any water restrictions in that particular bit of breakfast. And as far as I understand it, you have a, an area-based uh, entitlement to irrigate a certain area, which is not really enticing uh, for you then to invest significantly in improving your irrigation efficiency. Right? If there is no savings associated with it to go from overhead sprinklers to drippers or more. So there's a lot of scope there to increase what you can get out of the water you have. But I think there is some trends that I have start, tried to show on this slide here that indicates that scarcity is definitely going to be an issue. It's a little bit the same in Alberta. Everybody talks about scarcity. But in reality, I mean, I come from Australia, right? They have real scarcity. I mean, no, no fiddling around, right? Irrigators having access to 18% of what they usually get. And they have vineyards, right? Not good. Scarcity in both Alberta and, and, and Okanagan is still relatively uh, benign. So what I have been trying to tell people in Alberta is that that gives you a fantastic opportunity to do something about it. Because in Australia they did, right? So they suddenly all hell was loose, right? But, but where is the water? Why don't it rain, right? As it used to do. And then suddenly they had to take actions without having the chance to think properly about it, right? The opportunity that I think that both Okanagan and Alberta has is to start doing something now when it is not really that bad. So you don't have to do something in a panic. Policy making on the run, on a panic, is a bad thing. The worst thing you can do is thinking, oh, well, it's 10 years ahead, so why bother right now? Somebody else will be sitting in this room, somebody else will be politicians. It'll be somebody else's problem. That's the worst thing that can happen. So if you look uh, on, the, on, on some of the graphs up there, we can see that the predictions are that 
Uh, stream flows are going to be reduced quite considerably. Uh, there's also suggestions that climate change will result in a change from snow, from snow melt to precipitation, which is, even though precipitation might remain the same, the change from snow melt to rain is very bad. Snowpack in the mountains is the cheapest and most convenient storage you can ever get. No dams, no regulators. Snow falls, it melts, it comes down when we need it in the summer, right? So very, very nice. If you don't have snow melt, we are really in bad, in bad conditions. So there are some climatic indicators if you believe in, the, in, in, in this stuff, and some people don't, um, that will indicate that we are going to have less availability of water in the future. There's also some of the graphs here that are talking about the bottom right one there about population growth. And my friend rolling around on the web the other day to find some of this stuff. I couldn't find anything that went any uh, uh, further than to 1999, but you can see here that the population in Okanagan have grown. When the population grow, then demand for water increases. Another thing I noted on my little search on the web here is that about 58, 67% of the water used in Okanagan is in agriculture, which is actually a low percentage compared to many, many other areas. What is interesting is also that most of that is actually in our forages, whereas only 19% is for uh, individual pumpers out of, the, out of the river. And that has some influence on the way market can, can operate and the challenges and the institutional issues or reforms that you need to think about. The other things that I have uh, looked at the map there is the uh, agricultural land reserve, which is an issue in Okanagan that I have heard a lot about, um, that will also have some impact on the, what, what you can do. What is interesting there is a middle top map there where we have all the different districts and see how they are con conjunctive, um, following each other down the river. So these are some of the, and I might be wrong here, right? I've only done a, a brief uh, research on the, on the web about some of the local conditions. But I think these are some of the issues that need to be considered. 